Hi, everyone, and welcome. My name is Jen, and I'm a certified career coach at Indeed with over 10 years of career services experience, personally working with over hundreds of job seekers from a variety of industries. Today, I'm going to share with you some advice that I've refined over the years for answering the interview question, tell me about yourself. This video will give you the knowledge that you need to tell a compelling two to three minute story about your career and why you're a good fit for the role that you're interviewing for. Also, stick around until the end for a bonus tip on how to make a real connection with your interviewer. Now, I'm really glad that we're covering this topic because when I conduct a one-on-one -on -one mock interview with a client, this is actually the first place that I start. And that's because you're almost always going to encounter this question in one form or another during the interview, and often several times throughout the recruiting process. Oh, and if you find this content to be helpful, let us know by giving us a like. If you'd like to see more videos like this, or if you're just interested in knowing more behavioral-based interview questions and how to answer them, be sure to subscribe to our channel. So first, let's discuss, what are recruiters really looking for in an answer when they ask, tell me about yourself? Job seekers often ask me, recruiters have read my resume. Don't they know this stuff? Well, when you've applied for the role, your resume was likely processed by an applicant tracking system, which is more commonly called an ATS. This is software that many companies are using to help screen applicants. And if you'd like to learn more about the system, check out this link up here. Long story short, yes, in most cases your resume has been reviewed, but in some cases it probably only received a quick read. Plus, the recruiting process can be very disjointed. The person that's conducting the interview may not be the recruiter who selected you. So in short, it's wise to assume that your interviewer doesn't know the details of your professional history. In any case, when an interview asks you, tell me about yourself, they likely don't really want to hear about your resume. Instead, they're interested in learning about your professional journey and how your skills are suited for the role that they have. To craft a strong answer to the question, aim to create a compelling story. So, as with writing any other story, you want to start by creating a good outline. When structuring your response, I recommend using the present, past, future format. Writing down this outline will help you in arranging or rearranging your response. So, let's begin by starting with the present, and the present is where you are in your career right now, or most recently as it relates to the role that you're interviewing for. Another quick note, it's not necessary to state your name at the beginning of your statement unless you've been asked specifically about pronunciation. So, starting your response with, my name is, can sound stiff and mechanical, which you really want to avoid. Here's a sample present statement. I'm currently working for company C as a customer service representative. I've recently been leading a project that reduces the time spent on manual processes by implementing automated chatbots that respond to simple questions. In addition to this project, I spent a lot of time on the phone with clients, answering questions, assisting in navigating our website, and sending feedback to our product team for future improvements. So let's break this statement down. First, you share what you've been doing most recently by giving a high-level overview of your role. This includes stating your title, responsibilities, and projects that you've worked on recently. In our example, we stated that we're working for Company C as a customer service representative. And in a real interview, you would want to try to show a relationship between the work that you're doing and the role that you're applying for. If you're transitioning into a new role or industry, this is a great time to mention any certifications you've completed or classes that you've taken, or even personal projects that you've worked on that are related to the new role. So in this case, start with your most relevant experience before shifting to your recent role, and be sure to highlight the transferable skills that you've acquired that apply to this role. Next, take the opportunity to highlight a key accomplishment and use the preferred experience that you find within the job description to guide what you talk about. In our example, we talked about the project that we led that reduced the time spent on manual processes and increased efficiency. Once you've covered where you are now, start talking about the past, beginning with your motivation for entering the field. Avoid reiterating the information that a recruiter can easily find on your resume. You don't want to just provide a timeline for how you got here. You want to focus on your professional ambitions for pursuing this career path. So here's a sample past statement that we can break down. I've always enjoyed working with people and helping others, so I went to school and received my associate's degree in communication studies. While in school, one of my favorite classes was technical writing, which has become one of my greatest strengths. My first job out of college was as a technical writer at Company A, which I enjoyed. Although there was very little collaboration with my colleagues, and I spent about 95% of my time working alone. After Company A, I briefly took on a sales role at Company B, 
where I learned a lot about working within a fast-paced environment. Then the opportunity at my current company, Company C, became available, and I was able to combine my passion for technical writing, collaboration, and helping people. In this example, we started by providing a professional timeline by outlining the roles that we took after graduation, and we highlighted the key learnings from each. These learnings included the skills we acquired, like technical writing, as well as what we learned about the type of work that motivates us, like working in a collaborative environment where we can help others. If you've changed careers along the way or are trying to change careers now, then speak to what motivated the shift in your career path and try to tie a thread to this new career. If you're a recent graduate, you may consider talking about a class that motivated you. Basically, this is where employers like to hear the story of how and why you got to where you are right now. This section can change depending on how relevant your current role is to the job that you're interviewing for. If you're changing industries, it's helpful to highlight transferable skills you bring even when your previous role may not seem relevant at first glance. Here's a bonus tip. If you can show how your experience from a different industry provides you with a uniquely valuable perspective for the employer, that's even better. And finally, let's jump to the future. This part of your response is a great opportunity to get strategic with your answer and align your personal goals with the goals of the company. Aim to show that you've researched the company, that you know what their values are, that you've researched their mission statement, and that you are specifically well positioned to fill this role. By addressing how you support an employer's goals and how your values align with them, you're showing that you're a good match and that you're invested in them by already doing the research. Here's an example future statement. Looking forward, I'm seeking more leadership opportunities, and I think it's important to grow and be challenged. After managing several successful projects in my current role, I found a new passion in leadership and mentorship. I also want to be part of a company that contributes to the community, and I was so impressed with how your company organizes multiple volunteer events throughout the year. Now, the future statement is all about why. Why do you want this role? Why are you passionate about this opportunity? In our example, we talk about how we found a new passion in leadership and mentorship which are key attributes, especially when you're interviewing for management roles. We also made a point to reference the research done on the company by referring to the volunteer events that they coordinate throughout the year. And this aligns with our desire to work with a community-focused company. Speaking about what excites you about the role or industry could remind your interviewer why they got into the business in the first place. And this makes you more relatable and can draw a stronger connection. If it sparks a response or a similar passion from your interviewer, be sure to mention that in the thank you note that you sent after the interview. Wrapping up by focusing on the future is also a natural close to the answer. It signals to the interviewer that you're talking about a future within their company, and it gives them the opportunity to segue to the next question. A common way that I've heard candidates end their response is by saying, yep, that's me, but let's try this conclusion statement instead. And that's what brings me here today for this exciting opportunity. This is a much better way to signal to the interviewer that you're done talking. This link right above me will take you to an Indeed Career Guide article on this topic with more tips and example answers. Now that you know what you're going to say, let's talk about how you want to say it. And I have four basic tips here. One, avoid reciting or reading your resume. Remember, in your answer, you're telling the story of who you are and what brought you to this point. And where are you looking to go from here, all as it relates to this job? Two, leave out any highly personal information such as marital status, children, or political or religious affiliations from your answer. This is not relevant for an employer to decide if you have the abilities necessary to perform the functions of the job. Now, there can be some flexibility to this role. For example, if it's part of your personal story and it's critical to your career path, then it's appropriate to include a high level of detail. I, for one, have personally broken this role. When I was interviewing to be a technical career coach, my previous experience was with career coaching at a university level, with students who were majors in communication, business, liberal arts, Um, and I thought it was important to mention that I felt a personal connection to working with technical job seekers because my husband is a senior software engineer, and I saw how much he sometimes struggled in his own job search. And this addition really helped me in the interview because I was able to provide that personal connection to the type of job seeker that I would be serving at this company. This, in addition to the transferable career coaching skills that I already possessed, made me a strong candidate, and I was ultimately offered the job. But unless a personal story directly impacts your career path like this, it's wise to avoid mentioning these topics. Number three, be concise. 
This question is most likely to come up at the beginning of an interview, so it's best to craft a response that's roughly three minutes long. You'll have the opportunity to dig into the details of your experience and your accomplishments later. Talk about the main highlights of the role and the relevant strengths that apply to the job that you're interviewing for. A good way to be concise is to practice by using a timer or having a friend time you. And four, here's my bonus tip that I always share in one-on-one consultations. Don't forget about the human connection to your journey. Yes, it's important to have your key accomplishments ready and tailored, but a good interview should feel conversational. You can briefly mention hobbies, personal development, or your community involvement when it's relevant to the job that you're interviewing for. For example, if you're applying for a role at an outdoor sporting goods store, be sure to mention that you love to go on hikes. And five, smile and make eye contact. If you're in a video interview, try to remember to look directly at the camera. This communicates that you're engaged and you care about what the interviewer is saying. There's this great quote by Maya Angelou that says, I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And over the years, I found this to be really applicable to the interviewing experience. So being professional, approachable, and prepared are always traits that you want to aim to display. So to quickly recap, my top tips for how to answer, tell me about yourself are, one, stick to the format. Think present, past, future. Two, tell your story. Don't just summarize your resume. Three, leave out any personal information. Four, don't forget the human connection. And five, practice, practice, practice. So those are my tips for today's topic. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this information to be helpful and that you're able to apply it to your interview prep. If you'd like to see more interviews like this, please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated. See you next time.